Welcome to Big Idea Productions. I'm Phil Vischer. This is a chair you might sit on if you came to visit. This is the movie update, because Jonah is in theaters even as we speak, and so we have to tell people how it's doing, and it's doing great, so that's what we're telling them. This is Dan Phillips' old office, and for two years he had this sign up that said, we will finish this movie, and then we changed it to did finish the movie, and this is his other famous quote, you never really finish, you just run out of time. But we finished the movie. Okay, follow me. Okay, this is an editing room. We're going to sneak in and see an actual film actually being edited. There's an actual editor. What are you actually editing, editor? Well, I'm working on The Ballad of Little Joe, some exciting now, story. What is that? Is that, is, that a, uh, what, is that a SpongeBob episode? What is that exactly? Uh, a lot better than that. This is uh, one of the new VeggieTales stories that's coming out. Okay, this is audio one. Uh, this is where we record. This is Adam. Hi. Say hi. He's hi. He evidently just been skiing. Tim was the head of story on the movie, Jonah. He's also the voice of Khalil. Say Hello, something. Hello, my traveling buddy. Can you believe it? It's, it's almost like he's here. And uh, this is the box. This here is, well, it was a meat locker, but we converted it into a recording booth. We now have to store the meat outside when it's cold. But so we get locked in here sometimes for days on end. I was once in here for 12 days without coming out to record stuff. This is Am Amik Owens. Hello. She's the producer of Jonah. Hi. She made the whole movie, mostly by herself. A few people helped out on weekends, <laughs> but it was pretty much all her, right? Um, no. <laughs> this is Mark Volcano. He's our animation director. He's the king of the animators. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Yes, it's all about me. It's all, all about me. <laughs> That's one of the values we're promoting in our videos. Um, Oh, there's Khalil falling off a cliff of some sort. They said they were so. Is that is that for the outtakes? In live action filmmaking, outtakes actually produce themselves. In animation, outtakes have to be produced. In Maya here, I've I've graphed the Jonah box office results. See it? It animates this ball. So it would appear that we're hopping somewhere. Are we hopping? Would you say better or worse than say Shrek hopped? I haven't graphed Shrek. This is where we store our bicycles. A lot of people ride their bikes to work here, and of course there has to be a robot to protect them and make sure they don't get stolen, like R2-D2 in episode two, where he did a very bad job in protecting Princess Amidala from those worm things. But this robot is significantly more effective as a theft deterrent system than R2-D2 was in that film. That's why the bikes are here. This is, look up, lighting, hence the light. You see, because we're funny. It's the sense of humor, the light with, come on. This is a lighter. Um, he, he just finished his work on Jonah. He was working on Jonah for approximately, what, 17 months without sleep. So you can go home now. Wow. You're coming home. Johnny's coming home. As you can see, we're about to visit our lower level, which is for the most part full of men's and infants. This is an escalator. In some cases, escalators will actually move. This is a uh, story and concept. Concept means these people have to think of things that no one has ever thought of before. And have you guys thought of anything today that no one's ever thought of before? Uh, new ideas for Bob and Larry movie. Really? That's yep. great. That's, and no one's thought of them before? Nope. You're pretty sure? Uh -uh. Okay. It's only on paper. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? Hey, hey, hey. What are you working on? Bob and Larry concept. Oh, that's so cool. So that's like another movie or something that we're working on? We're sure hoping. <laughs> <laughs> we're sure hoping. Now look over here. This is what Chuck does. He can only paint tiny, tiny paintings. Chuck is the guy who painted the Last Supper on the head of a pin. And you can see from his detailed work here that, you know, if it's bigger than a postage stamp, he gets completely lost and he doesn't know what to do. This is called a color script. This is for the members of our studio that are illiterate, so they can't actually read a script. They have to go off pictures. Um, these are all of our concept artists and story guys and what they're working on. That may be a problem. We may want to look into that. Watch this, watch this. I just click this little button right there, and this little music box opens up. Now this is not final lighting or anything like that. This is all very rough. 
doesn't look like a vegetable. What's that all about? She's a music box little angel. Okay, so you saw it. You saw it first here. The first use of non-vegetable performers in a film of any kind by any studio, right here. What do you do? Uh, I am the design manager for apparel and consumer products. Did you design this shirt? I sure. designed this shirt. See, he only wears his own clothing. It's yeah. kind of a, you know, apparel designers are like that. They <laughs> refuse to wear anything they did not design. This is a part of the company that we refer to only as Thailand. Although the food isn't as good as if you actually went to Thailand, it's still generally a fun place to come. He's working on, oh, that's a cover for a Penguins video, right? For a Penguins display, actually. For a Penguins display. Okay, so it's like a video, but much bigger. Real big. Real, real big. Yep. That is cool. There's lots of cool stuff that goes on in here. Some people don't even get chairs because they're so creative that they just, it, the chair impedes their creative energy. So what are you doing, sir? I'm working on the DVD menu for Jonah. How's it going? It's going really well. We got really cool stuff, which you've already seen if you're watching the DVD. So. That's right! You're watching the DVD! So the coolness of what the bowing man is doing is self-evident to you. Uh, this is Brian with his ukulele. Uh, this is my collection of uh, regrettable food items. Re called regrettable edibles? Yep, and we've got uh, pickled pig's lips, and we're not quite sure what this is. What? What is it? We don't know. Monkey gland sauce? Monkey gland sauce. Crocodile jerky. How many jerkies do you have, first of all? Uh, I've got about eight or nine jerkies. Eight or nine jerkies? Uh, That's pretty good. I think I like the tuna jerky. For dogs, cats, and you. Prairie belt smoked sausage. Read the ingredients on the back. Chicken, pork stomachs, water, pork skins, pork spleens, pork tongue trimmings. What's this all about? Uh, these are our new uh, medical scrubs. Wow. Um, made by Dickies. Wow, and you are the uh, you are the resident big idea uh, RN. Um, I am, and I have Bob and Larry band aids. We have a finance department because you know making movies is not just fun and games, and that's why they're stacking up C checks. Where are the, some of these checks going? Do you think? We got stuff going to Canada. We got stuff going. We're, we pay Canada. We pay Canada. Ooh, this guy has to use more pencils than anyone else on Earth because he has to draw all these things. And this is the actual whale we used in the film. You know, it looks like a big fancy CGI Pixar kind of whale, but it's really, you know, it was a guy with a camcorder, and then this is roar. See, and if you move it slowly, it looks bigger. Do you see that? Because you can tell how big things are by how fast they move. If it moves fast, it must be tiny, like bullets. Very fast, very tiny. Whales, very, well, this is a small whale, but it looks small now, but when it moves like this, it looks huge. Can you say that again? It's an international hotel soap collection. We have India and China and Italy and really? three ones from Ireland and Brazil. What's your favorite soap? You love them all equally? I love them all equally. You like a good parent? Yes. Oh, look, over here we have uh, what we call our peanut gallery. And those, those are, hey, take off your hat. See, you know, if you, if, <laughs> If you stick your head up beyond a certain point at Big Idea, your hair is automatically shaved off by our security system, and they've both unfortunately made that mistake. What do you have here? Well, this is the Ducky Collection. We did a um, promotional giveaway. Promotional for ducks. Promotional ducks, and mm -hmm. we had to choose the right duck from a collection. This was, we decided, was too Ernie. Too Ernie. This one was too loud. Too, oh, yes. Yeah, we decided parents would kill us. Kill ya. This one won, and he had the best squeak. Oh, promised, Bob Elder in I our promised, Nashville office. I promised Bob that I would get him on the film. What's your favorite line of the film? Croquette is my speciality. Was it funny? I don't know. I couldn't hear it. Say you've been to MGM uh, Disney Studios in Orlando. You'll know that there's an animation studio where you actually walk out of the back door of the animation studio and you're in a theme park. Now you say, hey, that's pretty cool. Could any animation studio have a sort of situation like that that is any cooler? and you think not. Well, you're wrong, I'd say, because here at Big Idea, when we walk out our back door, we have to push this red button, which is actually kind of a time warp button. We push this button, we open this door, and we're in a mall. Disney has nothing on this. You can be animating one moment, buying candy by the pound the next, or taking a ride on a little train, or going to the food court, we're going back up the escalator now. 
the average big idea animator makes about 200 trips per day by escalator. That's by far the highest escalator trip rate of any animation studio in the world. Okay, now we're coming up to the office of one of the, the most famous men in America, according to a recent poll in uh, U.S. News and World Report. Mm -hmm. So this is Mike Naraki, a.k.a. Larry the Cucumber, a.k.a. Jean-Claude the P, Jerry Gord, uh, the Peach, you name it. Motivational speaker. That's right, he was also the motivational speaker and the co-writer, co-director, co-everything of the film. What's your favorite moment in the movie? Um, let's see, uh, I like when Larry's duck pops back up out of the water. That's oh, pretty yeah. funny. Can yeah. you do an impression of that? Uh, okay, let me do that. Ready? <sighs> oh, yeah, that one. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, thank you very much. That's real good. Thank you very much. Sounds just like him. This is Ron Eddy. He's actually our ice cube man. Yeah, we're a little low today. He, he spends right. a good, you know, 40, 60 hours a week just maintaining the level of, of our ice cubes. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, well, he considers it a ministry. This is our lunchroom. This is where the people of Big Idea um, used to have lunch. It doesn't work out so well anymore, you'll notice, because it's been taken over by computers. You see, really, the history of mankind is the struggle between man and machine. And in, in this case, it's pretty obvious that the machines have won. We flat out lost because our lunchroom has been entirely taken over by about 500 computers that had to render Jonah, and they're not leaving. They simply refuse to leave. Well, that's the end of the day. We've now spent 12 hours touring Big Idea all over the, the campus, and um, this is my office um, with some art from some little people and some art from some big people and uh, me looking silly. And, oh, yes, there's that's me, too. Thanks for coming, and I have to go make another movie now, so we'll see you next time.